Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Camp Cola's workshop. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are on now part three of my review of uh, my Chinese mini lathe. Uh, and as you can also see, exactly what I didn't want to happen has happened. Um, what's What I was doing was I was checking the run out on the uh, cross slide jibs and I noticed on one of them uh, one of the the adjustment bolts wasn't going in properly and I was getting a slightly weird run out at the end so I took that one I took the uh, the top slide of the cross slide apart and found two uh, engineering issues uh, which I'll show you in a minute I'll get my lathe table up on here um, and I also found a casting error which I'm not uh, happy to accept so I have uh, informed the seller of these two issues and uh, they've offered to hopefully replace the parts uh, or they did offer to um, replace the lathe so I don't really want to replace the lathe it's uh, as you can see it's from my work so far it's got uh, a bit damaged and also I'll probably end up with similar or you know diff more issues than I've got with this one so uh, I don't it's a bit of a a difficult choice but I'm going to stick with this lathe uh, and I'll show you what my issues are now I did mention in the first review video that uh, I had a uh, some damage to the bed so I'll just show you that whilst it's easier uh, hopefully we can see that I've marked it there it is so you can see there there's a some damage to the bed so it's uh, just on the, it's some kind of, um, I don't think it's a casting error, I think it's some kind of uh, damage that they did post casting. But anyway, I don't think that's affecting the operation of the lathe itself, so I'm going to just have to put up with that. So we're on the lathe table now, uh, and I'll just go through with you uh, why I've had to strip everything down, which of course I didn't want to do because I just wanted to get on with lathing, but of course. Those of you who've got a Chinese lathe, probably laughing into your sleeve now because you knew that wasn't going to happen. And of course it hasn't happened. So let's have a look at what, what, what the, the, well there's three small, three main issues I've got here. So first of all, it's with the jib, as I said. Um, now the jib itself has been machined very unsatisfactorily, in my humble opinion. Uh, this has basically been drilled out with a worn out drill. Um, really this should have been milled out with a flat base down there because every time the bolt, the Allen bolt goes into this, uh, first of all it's going to strip the end. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't because of the lighting, but those bolts in there starting to get their ends stripped so that means it's going to be difficult to get them out without damaging the threads here uh, and of course you're going to have an uneven um, seating of these bolts in the jib and it might well move because you've got the bolt in you know halfway down there on a bit of metal sticking out uh, and then it might move which is going to have a, an effect on your accuracy of the lathe so that's really really unsatisfactory um, but the main issue, apart from that incredibly bad machining, is that whoever did drill the jib has not lined up the holes properly uh, with the bolts. So what's actually happening is, and the reason I was finding the jib loose, was that the bolt, uh, the end bolt, isn't seating in the hole. I'll show you exactly where that is. So, there we go. You can see here that the bolt itself is actually seating on this hole here. So, on this, where it's made that mark. So, it's not in there at all. It's there. So, of course, what's happening now is the, the jib uh, is, is not, um, not secured as such as it is in that drill hole uh, it's it's there so what I've got to do is uh, I'm going to try and drill 
a hole exactly there which matches more or less the end of the bolt so the bolts held in uh, and it's not moving because obviously if I just extend this hole here uh, it's not going to hold in the bolt at all so I'm more or less wasting my time and I may as well just leave it resting up against the jib there so that's my plan uh, pl that's plan A uh, plan B is I've actually notified the seller of this issue uh, and I'm hoping to get another part but hopefully that will happen that's one of the reasons I went through Amazon uh, was to Obviously, if there's an issue, get some kind of backup. Um, the seller did ask me if I wanted to replace the lathe. Well, it's a bit dirty now, and my view is that if I have another one, it'll still have similar issues, and I'll end up having to do all that I've done again, i.e. cleaning, identifying what's wrong, and, you know, I might get a Duff motor controller, so ugh, I'm just, I've just asked the seller to replace that part. Uh, on the other smaller cross slide jib, same, similar, well, not, not the same issue, but you can see just badly drilled holes. And of course, they're at different depths. So that's deeper, that's slightly shallower, and that's even more shallower. So your bolts aren't going in properly. Um, I mean, I, I suspect that may have been what it was supposed to be in the first place. I don't know. Who can tell with these with this drilling? Anyway, the whole thing is a mess. So I'm going to have to re-drill that. I'll drill that to match these and I'll have I'll make sure that I as accurately as I can just get a bolt sized hole in there. But you hopefully you can see where it's damaging. This is this here is damaging the end of the bolts, which is totally unsatisfactory. So after my strip down, I found another issue, um, which is basically this bad casting here. Which you can see, oh, my table's moved. As you can see, uh, I've got a very bad casting here. Um, holes all over the place. Really bad. So I've asked for this block to be replaced as well. Because uh, that's definitely, there's some unevenness there. Which is obviously going to be affecting the accuracy. Uh, of the um, movements of the cross slide now so that I've asked to be replaced as well uh, in my part two video of the review you can see that I mentioned about the dial on here well basically what this dial is is <laughs> a piece of plastic I think and you can see for the cross slide uh, it actually moves which I realized whilst I was halfway machining with this so that is completely useless you may as well not bother with that it moves and there's no there's no marker um for that dial anyway so I'm not quite sure you could probably put your own marker in but why would you because the damn thing moves anyway uh so that's uh the issues that i'm dealing with at the moment um there is I'll just show you the kind of machining we're looking at here. Overall, you can see uh, on the part of the cross side that goes to the bed. Uh, what they appear to have done is just thrown this around the factory floor. Or thrown it in a bin or something, I don't know, parts bin. But you can see here, uh, on this lathe there's just bits of it unnecessarily damaged so I'm just going to have to file that off because that, that is coming over that damage is coming over onto this face here so I'm just going to file that down but just everything is bashed about you can see there just bashed when they've I'm assuming whilst they've machined it or when they've thrown it into the bin or whatever they've done with it um, has caused damage to all of these parts, unnecessary damage, I have to say. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to clean all of this up and get right into all these keyways here and get uh, any plastic, sorry, any rubber that's in there. Um, I think uh, deconstructing 
the cross slide is done in other YouTube videos. But if you want me to uh, to do to show you how to to deconstruct this cross slide system, I, I will do that. Um, it's quite fiddly to get into the uh, Allen bolts underneath, but it's possible with the Allen key that came with the uh, lathe itself. Because <laughs> of course, the, I found the bolts were quite loose uh, that hold this main main cross slide uh, onto the bed so they needed tightening up anyway uh, so yeah on with the fun uh, so uh, at the end of this video what I'll just show you is I've, I've done a run out check on the chuck um, jaws themselves previously in my first review video I did a um, a check of the chuck itself on runner and that was fine and I've done a, I've now done a check on a calibrated piece, uh, a measuring piece in the chuck, and at least I was ha reasonably happy with that. Just before I uh, get to the chuck run out test, I'm just doing a run out test on the um, cross slide main block that I've got the casting errors on. So I'm just going, I'm just seeing how that performs. Uh, before I put the rest of the cross slide together. So, as you can see, I've got automatic feed and I'm trying to keep the revs uh, fairly low. I think they're around 50 RPM. So, um, there doesn't seem to be a great amount of movement there, um, considering that I've just got the, um, the dial gauge holder just uh, with a bit of a lead weight block on the top of it to steady it down so um, that looks reasonably okay there's not too much movement in there um, but obviously once I've got the cross slide back together uh, we'll see what happens I, I haven't uh, re-drilled the jibs yet so I'm just seeing what it's like as is I've just very gently put everything back together temporarily um, but that seems to be okay so at least that part of the bed seems to be fairly straight since I've put it back together and not uh, not any significant movement there okay so this is a quick test of run out at chuck level you'll see if you watch my first review of this lathe I did a review uh, of the chuck level run out uh, around the chuck uh, which measured the accuracy of the uh, taper bearings and the seating of the uh, chuck shaft, etc., uh, and you saw that, that that was okay. That was reasonable. Not much of a run out there. So this is my test at uh, chuck jaw level run out. I've got. You can see I've got a test piece in there. So if we turn the lathe on, that's what we're getting. So that is okay for me. That seems good enough to me uh, and I think I won't send this lathe back uh, I'll just as I've said ask for the spare parts to be sent uh, that are causing me a problem so that's the end of uh, this part 3 re review video uh, will there be a part 4 well judging on uh, past history with this lathe there could well be so we'll have to see uh, what happens next in this lathe adventure so if you like my videos, uh, please uh, like and subscribe and uh, I'll keep making them if you do that. Okay, thanks for watching.